Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at B-Link's brand new Manjaro Linux powered mini PC known as the SER4X. As you can see, we've already got some AMD and Ryzen branding going on here, and that's because this is powered by a Ryzen 7 8-core 16-thread APU with built-in Radeon 8 graphics. We definitely have a super small form factor PC here, and a few weeks ago we actually took a look at the Windows version of this, known as the SER4. And basically, the only difference between the two is this one comes pre-installed with Manjaro Linux, the other one comes with Windows 11. So if you do already own the Windows 11 one, you could always install Manjaro on it if you want to. Inside of the box, you're going to get some mounting hardware for a 2.5 inch drive. We can mount one internally and a 65 watt power supply. So taking a look at the I.O. up front here, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, USB type C, and this is full function. So it does support 4K video out and two USB 3.0 ports. Moving around back, we've got Gigabit Ethernet, another USB 3.0 port, USB 2.0, and two full-size HDMI ports. So all in all, we can connect three 4K displays to this mini PC. When it comes to upgradability, there's not much going on here except for storage and RAM. This will support up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. We can also add a 2.5 inch SSD, and you can swap that NVMe SSD out if you need to. When it comes to the CPU, this is using the Ryzen 7 4800U. We've got 8 cores, 16 threads, base clock of 1.8 gigahertz, and a boost up to 4.2. This runs at 25 watts out of the box, but you can use third-party applications to get it up to 40 watts if you need to, and the cooling system actually handles it pretty well. And it'll definitely up the performance on this little APU. When it comes to the built-in graphics, we've got Radeon Vega 8 at up to 1750 megahertz. It does come pre-installed with Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. Right out of the box, you're going to get Manjaro Linux with the KDE Plasma desktop, but I wanted to swap this out because I've actually been using Plasma on a lot of different devices recently. So I just went ahead and swapped over to the XFCE desktop, but we're going to get the same performance. It's just really a different desktop experience. So yeah, I've had about a week to mess around with this, and overall it's been working really well. Main thing I wanted to test on this was some gaming. Ever since the Steam Deck release, there's been a lot of interest in Linux gaming, so we're definitely going to get into that. But using this as an everyday desktop works out just fine. Even if this had 8 gigs of RAM, we'd be good to go with it. The 4800U has more than enough power for your everyday task that you're going to do. Let's say some web browsing, you want to do some email checking, document editing, photo editing, light video editing, and even 4K video playback with the 4800U works out great, even at the wattage we're at right now, which is 25 watts. Manjaro has definitely come a long way in the last couple years. It's very user-friendly, and if you've ever used any kind of operating system in the past, be it Mac OS, Windows, or anything at all, you'll get used to using this really quickly. We do have a software center. We can go in here and download thousands of apps in a single click, and it's just as powerful as any other Linux distro out there. After all, Manjaro is based on Arch. Now, one thing I noticed with the XFCE desktop that I didn't notice with KDE was uh, lower clock speeds just right out of the box. And I'm not sure if it's detecting this as, you know, a mobile APU being on battery or not, but it's set up in power save mode. And I would highly suggest turning it to performance mode. This is going to give you those higher clocks on the CPU and overall just increase performance a lot on this little system. And really, the only time I noticed it was while I was getting into gaming. I could see that my clocks weren't going as high as they needed to be, so performance mode is the way to go on this APU. So we're in 1080p resolution right now, but I'm going to go ahead and kick it up to 4K. I'm not going to do any kind of scaling or anything like that, because I do want to test some 4K video playback from YouTube. Alright, so here we are with a 4K 60fps video. We'll go up to 4K, turn Stats for Nerds on, and I've tested about 5 different videos because I wasn't sure if Stats for Nerds was really working. And that's because I'm getting zero drop frames, so this is buttery smooth. We've got a true 4K 60 stream here with a true 4K viewpoint. I don't have any scaling going on with the operating system itself. And this handles 4K video playback, be it streaming or from an external drive or internal, really well. So yeah, I mean, the overall user experience with this little machine has been really good so far. I mean, just using it as an everyday desktop for everyday tasks. But how does it handle gaming? So keep in mind, we're using Steam Play or Proton with these games, and first up we have Elden Ring. We're at 720p low, and I do have Mango HUD on the left hand side so we can see what's going on. And with this, I'm only getting an average of around 31 FPS. 
it's to be expected with these Vega 8 graphics. We do have some really great CPU performance here, but when it comes to those built-in graphics, they're just not going to push these games at 1080p 60. Now, if you wanted to play this like it is at 30 FPS, then you can actually have a really good time with it. But this is definitely a newer AAA game, so let's go ahead and move over to something that's a couple years old. And that one's going to be Project Cars 2. Okay, so with this one, we've got performance mode going with the CPU. I'm set to 35 watts. I've also turned game mode on. Again, no FSR hacks or anything like that. I was actually expecting a little better performance out of it. We only averaged 56 FPS out of this game. Next up, we've got Injustice 2. We're at 720p, low settings, and uh, again, we just don't have enough GPU power. In Windows, I can actually run this at 900p, low settings, and get a constant 60 out of it. And I kind of expected a little hit on performance going over to Linux. But as you can see, I mean, it's definitely trying its hardest to hit that 60 FPS mark. Next up, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, 720p, low settings with no FSR. I've actually just locked it at 30 to see if we could do it. With FSR set to balanced, we can run this around 47, but we can't hit a 60 with it. Here we have GTA 5, 720p, normal settings, and with this one I actually got an average of 62 FPS. We still get some dips under 60 there, but overall it is a playable experience at 720p normal. And finally, for the PC gaming side of things, we have the new PC port of God of War. We're at low settings, FSR set to performance, 720p, and we get an average of 38 FPS. I mean, it's definitely not bad, and everything that we've tested so far can run at 720p, 30 FPS. Some of this stuff can be taken up to, you know, 900p and 1080p running it at 30. But these newer AAA games on the 4800U, at least in Linux, just aren't doing that great. Now I just wanted to throw a little bit of emulation in here because we do know that that 4800U can run N64, Dreamcast, it can do PSP, it can do GameCube, and Wii. And with the TDP set up correctly, it can do PS3 quite well in Windows, but I wanted to test it in Linux. So here we have RPCS3. We're at 35 watts and it's doing a pretty decent job. This is definitely a harder one to emulate. And with this, I did take the resolution up to 1080p, so it does handle PS3 quite well. And if I was to take that wattage up to around 40 or 45, we could get even better performance out of this game. So overall, I think this tiny PC does handle Linux quite well, and this is becoming common practice for a lot of these manufacturers to kind of put out a variant with Linux pre-installed right out of the box. And we'll probably be seeing this a lot more down the road. And it really all started as soon as a lot of people got their hands on the Steam Deck and saw how good Linux is with gaming and Steam Play and Proton right now. For this machine here with the 4800U, I wouldn't run out and pick this up specifically for gaming, but for emulation, it does a great job. And if you need a secondary desktop and you want something with Linux already on it, ready to go, then this could be a great option for you. But keep in mind, you can also get the Windows 11 version of this if you want Windows. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look at the SER4 Manjaro Edition Mini PC from B-Link. If you're interested in learning more, I will leave a couple links in the description. And I'm planning on testing some more Linux distros on this unit. One thing I really want to get installed on here is SteamOS 3.0, or the operating system that's on the Steam Deck. With FSR, we could definitely get a little better performance out of everything, and with some more TDP tweaking, we could pull a little more FPS out of all those games that I tested, but I need a little time to mess around with it. If you're interested in seeing a video like that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and maybe turn notifications on so you know when I post my next one. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.